Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and this month I'm doing a series on oscillator design showing how several different types of oscillators are made. In this video I'll show how to make an anti-aliased sawtooth that sounds like this. All right, so this is a pretty complicated oscillator, but we can start as we always do by creating a new macro and placing a phase accumulator inside of it. We'll use the ramp oscillator as our phase accumulator. Control its frequency with an incoming note pitch. Give it the standard amplitude of 1, and I'll sync it to restart with any new MIDI note using the gate module. We'll use the output of the phase accumulator to calculate what's called a band-limited impulse train, which is a very useful building block for making anti-aliased oscillators. And in order to create a band-limited impulse train, also called a blit, um, we'll need to calculate some variables that are dependent upon the incoming frequency. So we'll create a new macro and give it the frequency as an input. And the first variable I want to calculate is the number of partials that we want to play back for our sawtooth and this is going to go down as the frequency goes up. So to calculate this value we can divide the maximum frequency that we want a partial to be able to have. I'm going to choose 20,000 because that's the limit of human hearing and most people can't even hear that high. So we'll divide this by F and that's the number of partials in our sawtooth. However um, we don't really want to screw around with um, decimal values of partials, so we want to take this number and strip it down to its integer value using a modulo function. Uh, the divide output, when we modulo by 1, will give us the integer value of our input, and we are also going to want the decimal value x We'll use this to fade between two different values that we'll calculate in our next macro. So n is our number of partials, x is our crossfade value, and we also want to calculate another variable called f of n. And to get this, we'll take the incoming frequency and divide it by sorry, multiply it by 2 pi, which is equal to 6.283185. And we'll divide this over the sample rate, which we can grab from our system info module. So this is just basically calculating the increase of our phase um, for each sample tick and we'll use it towards the end of this project to uh, create a filter for our blit function. So next let's create the blit and it will take the n and x values as inputs as well as our phase. So this macro is based on some core code that I wrote a while back. Um, An error smith who made Razor was helpful enough to show me a mistake that I had made and a fix that eliminated some clicking that was happening when the frequency was being swept. I took that code, optimized it again, and translated it to primary for this tutorial. So basically we're going to calculate our blit function two times um, for two different values of n. So first we'll take n and add 
and multiply that times the phase. We'll take the product of that and subtract the phase from it. And now we have our two different positions. We want to take the sine of each one with the sine module. And we want to cross fade between these two values using the x input that we calculated previously. We can use the crossfade module for this, which is in the signal path menu. And you want to make sure to set the um, type to be linear in the function tab of properties. So as the frequency changes, our value of n changes as well. And using this crossfade here helps eliminate any clicks that might occur from sudden changes in the value of n. So thanks to Aerosmith for that. Um, next we want to take the output of our crossfade and divide it by our phase times 0.5 and then we'll take the sine of the phase. So multiply by 0.5 and then we'll duplicate this sine module here. We want to take the output of our division, subtract 1, and multiply by 0.5, and that is the code for our band-limited impulse train. These are really cool. We can shape them into any of the classic analog um, oscillator shapes such as pulse waves or triangle waves and um, they're just generally pretty awesome since we can choose the maximum frequency we can also use that as a low pass filter um, all sorts of interesting things we can do here so in order to translate our blit waveform into a anti-aliased sawtooth, we need to create a third macro um, that's called a leaky integrator, which basically operates as a low-pass filter. Unfortunately, I couldn't get any of the primary low-pass filters to work in its place, which is not surprising because it kind of has a rather specialized uh, use. So we'll take the incoming Fn value and multiply it by 0.25. So this will act as a sort of coefficient for our filter. So we're going to take the input, subtract from it the most recent output of our filter, and then multiply that by our coefficient value. And I'll provide the other value to our subtraction in just a second. When we're done multiplying, we want to add the output of our filter um, to the output of our multiplication as well. And the output of our add module will be sent to a unit delay, which you can find in the delay menu. This delays the, single, the signal by a single sample so that we can use it to feed our sing signal back into the filter. So that's our leaky integrator and its output should be a perfect sawtooth. Um, they look a little strange. We'll take a quick look at it on the scope, um, but they have a lot of ripples in the waveform that are actually there to remove unwanted components from our signal. So let's add an envelope to our code and then we can link it to the speakers and take a listen to make sure everything's working all right. The components that we made creating this oscillator can also be used to create pulse and triangle oscillators that are perfectly band limited as well and I'll show you how to do those in the next video. Uh, once again this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com